Hello everyone, welcome to Simi Vision. I'm Eric, a Simi Vision pilot, and today we'll be doing a long awaited video of our updated simulator. Last time we made this video, I was young and we made our KFCS. It's still in our simulator right over there. I still use them while I'm flying, and we added on to our simulator more stuff, more ways to make it even more realistic and much better to fly. Uh, our goal at Simivision is to make you get into flying and make your own simulator at home. And uh, we want to inspire you that you don't need the most biggest, greatest things to use or to make a simulator. Our computer, our setup isn't that big and it's quite cost effective honestly. You'll see later on in this video. So, the biggest visual change in our whole simulator is our monitors. We start. We first started with our two 19-inch monitors. You can see our KEFCS video and you'll see those monitors on it. We wanted a three monitor setup because it looks very nice on a simulator. It really makes it more immersive. Uh, but our GPU is not capable and FSX isn't that well useful in three monitors because each time you load a flight you have to always reset all of your camera angles and you, I understand some people save their flights but suppose I want to fly in a different airport I still have to do the whole thing again which isn't that useful now because of this we have to maximize our usage of our two monitors so we used one monitor as our main display and our second monitor to show the instruments because FSX has a very good feature that you can almost pop out anything you want and put it to any monitor you want. So we had everything in our other display. Later on we learned that there's another simulator called X-Plane 11 which has way better graphics <laughs> obviously and aerodynamic physics are much more accurate to the real aircraft and to us we found the proportion to be more well realistic. Whenever we were landing in FSX, it felt super 2D, like you can't quite understand how high you are. And it felt very fast when you were moving uh, through the air, when especially in landings, because you want the aircraft doesn't go that quick in real life. So uh, we got X-Plane 11, and because of all this, it makes the whole simulator much more natural and realistic while flying. Now, we continued using our two monitors after changing from FSX to x 11 because, again, our GPU still didn't support three monitors. You can see our ASAP TW video and learn more about that. Later on, we got three monitors. We got a 19-inch, a 20-inch, and another 19-inch. The two 19-inches are our old 19-inch monitors, and we got just a center 20-inch monitor. You can again see our ASAP TW, our making of ASAP TW for that. We'll leave all these videos links in the description below. So check that out. The only problem was is that the monitors were very heavy and they were all 16 by 10. The aspect ratio just doesn't match more, you can say universally. Everyone has 16 by 9 monitors and 16 by 10 makes it, um, you can't quite see that much farther. 16 by 9 monitors creates a very nice uh, wraparound type feeling than 16 by 10s. So we upgraded the monitors to three 22 inches Samsung IPS monitors, which you can see behind me right now. And after upgrading it uh, to 16 by 9 instead of 16 by 10, we got way better proportions. As you can see, it's so realistic now. Everyone we showed it to actually thought they were sitting in an aircraft. You can see a video on our channel uh, to get correct proportions in X-Plane 11. Stay subscribed and stay tuned for even more videos later. Now, of course, because we use three monitors, you might be wondering what happened to our GPU. Well, we upgraded our GPU to a 1050 Ti, which is obviously way more powerful. And plus we didn't need to upgrade our PSU power supply unit. It's still gonna use the same power supply. So now the whole computer upgrades now on our simulator. 
Of course, you know, we went from FSX to X-Plane 11 and um, uh, the limitations that time was that we didn't upgrade our GPU yet to the 1050 Ti. Our RAM wasn't quite like good. It was 6 GB. That's not enough for X-Plane in our eyes. So we even had to upgrade that and our OS because we were on Windows 7 and that did not support Vulkan. Now, Windows 10 supports Vulkan. So we wanted to upgrade it to that as well. So we upgraded from a GT420, our old GPU, to a GTX 1050 Ti. Upgraded our RAM from 6 GB to 20 GB and upgraded our OS from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Again, because we wanted to use Vulkan for enhanced performance. Now moving on from our computer upgrades, we want to go to our sound upgrades. We first used to have a two stereo mini uh, mini stereo system and um, they weren't that powerful they were just tiny ones now we're using them as our PACCOM system you can see our video in our channel <laughs> very interesting now uh, we upgraded it to a 2.1 out from Altic Lansing so like, obviously that will be very good quality 2.1 steer system with a very heavy base we made sure that the base is connecting to the back of the sim so that it gives that rumbling feeling whenever I'm flying, especially on the yoke and on the rudders. We made it touch so that it can like rumble properly on the simulator. Now making the base touch our simulator gave that nice rumbling sensation to my yoke and to my rudders, but we wanted to go more on it. So we made a haptics to our simulator. Now how we did that is by making a butt kicker simple fast easy butt kicker you can see the video in our channel now in a butt kicker i can actually feel the engine like it's under me like it's giving the vibration especially in the air and even more on landings i can actually judge if my aircraft did a very hard landing or a very soft landing sometimes it doesn't even make any effect i can just feel the wheels touching the ground and yes it does actually give you the movement of the wheels very good, very realistic, and it really makes the whole sim way more immersive. Now moving on to our external mapping device. Before we were using a Samsung tablet 10.1 inch. That time we were using an application called FS Move Map, and on the computer it was called FS Move Map Server. We were using FSX that time, and you can see our KEFCS video in our channel. Now, when we upgrade our simulator to X-Plane 11, we realize that FS Move Map doesn't work on it because it's FS, Flight Simulator. So that's not compatible. Now, we uh, wanted to upgrade our tablet as well because we realized that in the long term, it's not gonna work that well. We wanted an iPad. And if you notice in all of aviation, mainly pilots use an iPad because of how reliable it is. So for the long term, we got an iPad. Uh, you can see our making ASAP TW video, it shows our iPad on that. Now we will be doing a demonstration of our new application that we found called Flight Plan Go. It's a free application on the App Store and even on Android if you even have an Android tablet or device you want to use it. So let's show you how you can get your charts on Flight Plan Go. Let's get into, let's go to my iPad. So. Here's my iPad. As you can see, we have two applications for Flight and Flight Plan Go. We will be doing, we have a comparison video on our channel. You can see for Flight versus Flight Plan Go and what we think is a better option, depending if you're a simulator or a real life pilot. Now, for now, just for this demonstration, let's use Flight Plan Go. So let's open it. And uh, here is the main chart where you can see your aircraft. Right now I have my simulator connected, that's why you can see my aircraft. But we just want to show you the charts right now. So in the left, there these are all your modules you can say. Right now we're on the map module, the one on top of it is airports. And we click on that one. Now this is all your airport information. You have your on the left, right now we're selected on FPO. This shows all the FPOs in this airport. This is Billy Bishop on Toronto. And um, if you want to see the charts, you have this 
um, other sub menu called procedures. You click on that and these are all your procedures. So we have our aerodome chart. You can click on that. And here is the aerodome chart. You can see my uh, aircraft is right here on runway 26, ready for takeoff. And if you go back, suppose I want, for example, maybe a localizer approach for runway 26. You can see right here is our, here is our um, ILS. Now this is very nice, very easy to access and Flyplan Go is a pretty nice application. The biggest reason right now why I'm using Flyplan Go instead of ForeFlight is because Flyplan Go is free. ForeFlight is paid. That's one of the biggest things that we'll be talking about in our comparison video uh, in our channel. You can go check that out. Right now, um, this is all we want to show for Flyplan Go. Now let's move on to um, uh, our next external mapping device. That is Airspaces. This is a website on uh, any browser. You can just search in airspaces.app if I'm correct. Uh, if not, we will give you a link in the and bl below in the description. This site allows you to connect to any um, to see anyone on the server. So on Xplane, you can uh, give a network output, and uh, that network output will go to Airspaces uh, services uh, servers. I'm sorry servers and then you can see the aircraft from anywhere even from your local network or even from the internet suppose you have someone in the other side of the country or other side of the world even you they can even see it and um, you can always uh, use airspaces like F uh, flight plan go uh, if you just can't use it for some reason you can always use this as an alternative the best thing about airspaces as well is that it's a always updating map. So you can say it's almost like a live feed of all the aircrafts. If you are on the internet, you can see multiple people and it's all live. They're doing that right then. We can show you a demonstration of this in our local airspaces the server. Uh, right now I'm going to take off from runway 26 and you can see it on the browser that uh, I am going to take off. So let's do that. Okay, brakes released, 100% throttle, airspeed's alive, in the green, and rotate, positive rate, gear up, And there you go, you can see in airspaces, I have successfully taken off. I'll just pause this in right here. There you go. Now you can use this to show, suppose, anyone maybe across the world or as I mentioned across the country or across the world, your flight or again as a, another external mapping device. Okay, let's move on from external mapping devices to our rudder pedal upgrades. Before we used our Wingman Formula GP car pedals, and you can see our KEFCS video of that. And uh, that time we thought it was a very good solution to rudder pedals, to get a cost effective rudder pedal because uh, for some reason rudder pedals are actually as expensive as getting a throttle quadrant and a yoke together. We didn't think it was worth it if we have this solution. And we used the steering wheel as a tiller because like, the amount of realism that you feel when using a tiller instead of using the rudder pedals, especially you're, when you're using a 737, is massive. Really, really realistic. So we decided to keep that portion of it, but we realized further on when we uh, went for our real Cessna flight, you can see our Cessna flight video in our channel, that I was actually pressing the tow brake all the time. I couldn't control the aircraft's turning properly because when you're turning, you have to use the rudder to balance the aircraft all the time. Now because of that, and we want a more accurate simulator. So we got a rudder pedal, a Logitech rudder pedal. But um, if you're uh, maybe doing this for fun or as a hobby, but you want something cost effective, it's not bad. It can still do, but if you're someone who is more into it, like more serious about it, you should really 
go for a rudder pedal. It is a must in a simulator. Just like in an aircraft, you have a radio panel. So the same thing, if you're simulating, we need a radio panel as well on our simulator. So we got a Logitech radio panel and we made our own ASAP TW. You can see them, they're right over here, both of them. Pretty nice. So then we thought, okay, we also want an autopilot system on our simulator. Now we looked at the Logitech autopilot um, system, just like our radio panel here. But the thing is, is that it was pretty expensive and also it would be way too much of duplication of uh, hardware. And we don't want to duplicate the hardware, of course. So we thought, we I mean, we found a software and uh, this software makes you makes use of your existing hardware, which will be our radio panel and modify it to make it whatever you want, whatever system you want on your um, plane, on your sim. So let's now show you that uh, software. Right over here, this is the software. It's called spad.next. Now compared to getting the hardware, this is way more cheaper and um, much more effective because you don't need a hardware specific thing then. You can program it to do anything you want. And um, you can click this button right here. This will show you all the hardwares available for you to program. And this is our radio panel and we have uh, stuff that we have programmed to it. We will show it to you on our Spad.nx video. Uh, well, that's it for now. This is all our upgrades that we put into our simulator. I hope you enjoy all of these uh, upgrades. And if you are uh, inspired by it, uh, then make your own simulator. Now. We didn't. We took our time to get all of these uh, products. We didn't get them all at once, and we made sure that we get the right thing at the right time for the best in the future. So you don't need to rush to get all these products all at once. Take your time, and if your budget allows you, you can always go for more. Totally fine. And um, the only thing that we would say is that just don't make an aircraft-specific uh, simulator. It, for the long term, you want to try other aircrafts and it just won't be suitable to have like a 737 sim, but you're like flying a Cessna. So keep it just a simple sim. I hope you enjoyed this video and please do subscribe, watch our other videos and share with as many people as you can. Also, uh, leave a like on this video if you like it and if you have any comments, please do share to us. We would love to answer your questions and um, just be open with us. And until next time, see you later.